Black Lives Matter at School is a national coalition organizing for racial justice in education. And they're encouraging educators, students, parents, and communities to join an annual week of action during the first week of February each year. But what is a week of action? That's my question, because it sounds innocent enough, maybe even inspiring, especially since BLM at School is calling this the year of purpose. In the wake of the highly publicized and controversial deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and Tony McDade, they say a great uprising for black lives has swept the nation and the world and is inciting new urgency and radical possibilities for advancing an abolitionist practice and uprooting what they call institutional racism. Now, if you're a decent human being, you don't want to see any life unjustly taken or taken at all. We don't have time to dive into the hypocrisy of a movement with the words lives matter in it that also supports abortion, but I would like to call attention to the intentional use of the word inciting. I thought that's what we were kicking people off of Twitter for, not inviting them into our schools to teach our kids. But what does BLM at school really want to teach your children? Because it's not equality for mankind, and it's not an end to prejudice, because most kids aren't. Hatred and racism has to be taught, and spoiler alert, it's actually being perpetuated and taught by the very people who claim they want to end it. Now, it's not about racism at all. It's not even about lives that matter. I'll prove that to you. As a matter of fact, their true agenda is written right on their website if you look. They are committed to being queer affirming. When they gather, they do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of the heteronormative thinking, or rather the belief that all in the world are heterosexual unless they say otherwise. They're committed to that. They're committed to embracing and making space for trans people to participate and to lead. And they're committed to being, quote, self-reflexive and doing the work required to dismantle cisgender privilege and uplift black trans folk, especially black trans women, that they say are disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence, meaning we won't let black men dressed as black women into a bathroom with little black girls. (laughs) Now, they're committed also to disrupting the Western prescribed nuclear family. And they say in all these things, quote, we need not qualify our position. In other words, you just have to accept it. We don't have to prove it or explain it. You just got to go with it if we say it. Now, I'm nervous to preface anything with this is what we do in America, because lately, with a lack of historical education, context, or law and order, many people really don't know what we're supposed to do in America. But I will tell you, without a shadow of a doubt with the church, what Christians are supposed to do. We are people affirming, not queer or trans affirming. You're a person, a soul created by God and who you have sex with, whether right or wrong and what you choose to wear, whether right or gender confused is not your identity. Furthermore, the color of your skin doesn't really define you or make you all that different. God created diversity because God loves diversity. Just have a look at a garden or a landscape or the sky to see the various colors complementing one another, not at war with each other, because at their core, they are created by God. Just like the family, which God created on purpose for a purpose as part of his plan for humanity. Now, maybe sin has disrupted your family and you don't have a mom and a dad working together in a God-honoring marriage and raising children or a dad fulfilling his God-given purpose to lead the home and provide for the home. But just because you come from a broken home doesn't mean you have to be a broken person. And you don't have to perpetuate that brokenness generation after generation because that's exactly what disrupting the nuclear family means. It means educating our kids to turn their back on the institution God created. Educating our kids to accept gender dysphoria, racism, or unnatural sexuality as normal is a problem, especially as their young minds are developing, and it's got to stop. Teaching them how to love ultimately happens at home, not at school, and it only happens in homes that are committed to the local church and the word of God. Without God's word, you won't have love. Trans and gay identifying individuals rank among the highest in depression, anxiety, alcoholism, and suicide. Why? Because they're running from what and who God created them to be. They're running from God. If we really believe they matter, we're going to share Jesus with them. If you want to see healing, it's only going to come through the healer. Only Jesus has the power to abolish stereotypes, destroy addiction, and exude that unconditional love because God 
is love. So fighting the liberal education bias in our nation isn't about hating people because of their lifestyle choices or fighting people. It's about loving people enough to not accept their lies and to point them toward truth and the source of truth. So no, I, I'm not prejudiced, but I'm certainly not perfect either. But I am biased toward truth. So if you agree or disagree with these comments, I want to hear from you. Click the link below this video to make your voice heard. Because if we're going to see change one direction or the other, it's only going to come if a large number of us band together in unity and agree to make a change.